Hey, what's going on everybody? And a warm welcome, as always, back to the Whiskey Cove. And on today's episode, we look at the whiskies to look out for in the month of April. Run that video. All right then folks, let's just dive straight into this video, which is all about whiskies to look out for in the month of April for this edition. So I already filmed this about a week ago. However, um, there was a new release of a certain whiskey that I'm gonna talk about right at the end. And it just kind of sent social media into a frenzy. So I wanted to redo it. And this is gonna come out in the beginning of April here. So plenty of time in the month of April to be able to find these whiskies. So let's just dive straight into things. So, Maker's Mark are back with their kind of semi-annual release wood finishing series. So this is going to be the final edition in the Maker's Mark wood finishing series. Um, they were set, this is going to be the seventh bottle. Uh, they started with the 2019 RC6, and if you remember, the BRT01 and 2 were the last editions. And they're saying this one is going to be the BEP edition, and uh, like I said, it's going to be the last one of the line. So it's, one, it's going to be interesting to see what they make as like the annual release, or if they continue, continue with these annual releases moving forward. So this is mash bill, 70% corn, 16% wheat, and then 14% malted barley. It is a wheat, so you're going to get that wheat in the mash bill. No rye in the mash bill so it's going to be really approachable and really drinkable to there it's stated as a finished bourbon not a finished wheat bourbon just finished bourbon obviously out of there out in kentucky abv on this one is going to be 55.35 percent abv much like mostly all malva makers mark kind of sit right there as well so why it, they generally don't have too much high abv with makers mark originally the highest proof you could put into a barrel uh, was a hundred and 10 and then they changed the laws i believe to allow 130 proof going in however makers mark stuck with 110 which is why you generally see their whiskey set around that uh, around like the 55 percent abv cast strength they said that you kind of get more flavor just sitting at that entry proof into the barrel which is why they do that today here so this is going to be coming out uh, anytime now you might have already seen some photos or if you're lucky enough out there you might have been able to find it out on the shelves already price much like the other wood finishing series is going to be around 70 dollars so if you take a look at the label here much like the other wood finishing series beautiful label really nice blue color which i really like there as well nothing too interesting with this ball pretty makers mark all over let's move on to our next edition here so this is going to be the pin hood vertical rye series and this is going to be the seven year so this is going to be a mgp sourced or ross and squib this is going to be a seven year old straight rye whiskey this is going to clock in at 52.56 percent abv the mash bill where i was able to find is going to be 95 percent rye and then five percent malted barley so a pretty heavy rye mash bill of course it is a rye but nevertheless pretty heavy right there availability apparently is going to be quite limited they're saying it's going to be about 5970 bottles there um pinhook i haven't tried pinhook but i know that some people have and they really like pinhook it's the one with like the horse on the label on the front which we'll see on the screen here now again like i said you have like the horse on the screen you see the seven year age statement there as well it's also you know perfectly timed for the kentucky derby and we'll also talk a couple uh we'll also talk in a short while about some other horse related bottles coming out here soon so this is price wise is going to come in at 78 dollars give or take so it's definitely getting up there in price but you are getting a seven year 52.56 percent abv rye there as well so it's not terrible value for me like i said i can't speak to the flavor profiles with that because i haven't tried it it's not a pretty unique ball for this time of year Next up, uh, we have Kentucky Peerless High Rye Bourbon. So Peerless, uh, they do, uh, they do the, uh, the just the classic rye that looks like a green label bottle. They also do the double oaked bourbon, which a lot of people rave about. The distribution isn't great for Peerless in uh, our, uh, in Colorado, but you do still some find some really great stuff from them out here. So this is going to be the Peerless High Rye Bourbon, straight bourbon classification, non-age stated. I wasn't able to find uh, an age for this whiskey online. ABV, it says it varies. So uh, is it a single barrel if it varies? 
it says it's a straight poem so it's not really given us any idea there so maybe they just have small batches and then they just vary and prove they don't cut it down to a specific amount of ABV price on this bad boy is gonna be $159 so we don't get an age statement it's not single barrel yes uh, ABV does vary but you're probably looking at around 108 proof so about 54% ABV, so lower end of the cast strength. So it's a pretty high markup there. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how this drinks. Even though PLS generally, their prices are generally about $100 for a lot of this stuff. But it's not like this is like a 10 year age statement or anything like that. So I do think this is a little bit high, but again, I haven't tried it, so I can't talk about it that too much. And if we look at the label there, pretty classic kind of peerless, uh, peerless kind of drum design on the glass. It, uh, it's, a, it's a really nice bottle, just looking at it. Cool gold and kind of charcoal gray with it. If you're one who likes PLS, I'm sure you'll like this. It does say high rye bourbon, so I expect it to be maybe a little bit more on the spicy or tobacco -y side with that. So that was a PLS high rye bourbon. Next, we're gonna go over to Scotland because we're gonna talk a little bit about Glen Grant 21. This is, of course, a Scotch, and it's gonna be 21 years old, kind of on a Scotland there. It's gonna be available, available in the US nationwide, released anytime now through the rest of the year. Price on this is gonna set you back a handsome $360. Uh, scotch, when you generally get up to stuff like 21 years of age, you're generally gonna pay a higher price for it, as it is with most whiskies, but specifically scotch there. So they talk a little bit about Glen Grant, who, for folks who don't know too much about scotch and Glen Grant in general, they go on to state that Glen Grant is adding this 21-year-old expression to its core range, making it the oldest permanent available whiskey in the lineup for Glen Grant. It's aged in a combination of Oloroso sherry butts, hogsheads, and bourbon barrels from warehouse number four. A traditional stone dunnage warehouse that is in the distillery, uh, that is the distillery's oldest. The 21 year old joins the 10, 12, 15, 18 of the whiskies in the Glen Grant range. I have the 15 over there and it is fantastic. It's a little bit higher proof than 46. That is uh, batch strength, so it's a little bit higher proof. However, this is coming in at 46% ABV. So for those Scotch fans out there, you might want to keep an eye out for this one. Again, it is a little bit pricey, but you kind of have to pay that sometimes with Scotch there. Coming back to the United States here, and Michters are back with a 10 year straight bourbon. So last year they didn't release one. They felt that the flavor profile was uh, not ready. They felt that it might just need it another year. So that tells me that it's older than 10 years, I guess, at this point, because if it was 10 years last year and they let it age for an extra year, it's at least 10 years. So we'll say 11 years for this dude here. ABV on this one is going to be 47.2%. Again, I wasn't able to find the mash bill on this one. It is an undisclosed mash bill, but it is a bourbon whiskey, so we know it's going to be at least 51% corn. So Michters then go on to say um, about this release that they thought that the 10-year bourbon that they were releasing was drinking beautiful last year. But, they, but the master distiller, Dan McKee, and our master of maceration, Andrea Wilson, stated that one more year of maturation, it would be extraordinary. At Michters, the goal we strive is to produce the greatest American whiskey. We are grateful for understanding and patience that our loyal Michters fans have shown us waiting an additional year for this release of the 10-year bourbon. So I think this one is definitely worth trying to pick up. Of course, it's going to be pretty highly limited um, and it is a little bit pricey. So this year's edition is going to come in with a suggested retail price of $185. So I believe that's like almost like a $25 to $30 markup from 2021s. But however, they are saying that this is pretty phenomenal and maybe the best that they've had for a very long time with this 10 year edition so what i would say if you're able to find this uh, for msrp around 80 185 dollars definitely get it i'm sure you won't be disappointed there is a cult following with this but when you see like something like a mick does which is a 10 year old bourbon for 185 dollars it really does put into perspective of something like a russell's 10 and like an eagle red 10 that are able to keep their prices down to like 30 and 40 dollars respectively so even though Mictas is charging $185 for their bottle, again, lots of people say that it's great whiskey there. So definitely pick that up if you can find it. Next, we're gonna talk a little bit about a collaboration with a country music star, and that is Bluebird Distilling, and then country music star Jordan Davis's collaboration on a new whiskey here. So with this bottle, 
We are seeing, uh, I think it was the last one was Eric Church that we saw there was a collaboration between, you know, the country music stars. There's a few people that have done it before, but they're doing their own spin on it here. So Jared Atkins, the founder and master distiller of Bluebird Distilling and the award-winning Grain de Glass Distillery is thrilled to announce a new partnership with nationally celebrated music star Jordan Davis, who was the recipient of the CMA Song of 2022, which is a big deal, country music artist song of the year, basically, is what that is saying. So, well, Atkins goes on to say that Bluebird Day Straight American Whiskey is about two worlds coming together, whiskey and music. It celebrates new friendships and the love for a perfect Bluebird Day, said Atkins. We tasted through several blends and this one was truly special. Perfect for sipping on and listening to Davis's new album. So this is going to be a straight American whiskey. They go on to say this is going to cost about $50 for 750 milliliters and it's going to clock in at 86 proof of 43% ABV. So not too bad. $50 isn't too bad. I think the Eric Churches were around $60, $70. So just clocking in just a little bit cheaper than that. So the blend on this is going to be two different whiskeys. One is going to be 90% of the whiskey and the other is going to be 10%. So the 90% is going to be their Bluebird Bourbon aged six years, which is 75% corn, 15% heirloom rye, and then 10% barley. And then the rest, the last 10%, is gonna be their Bluebird Red Wheat Whiskey aged seven years, which is 100% whole grain Pennsylvania red winter wheat. So again, $50, I think it might be worth a stab, honestly. Uh, 86 proof, 43% might be a little bit on the lower side for a lot of folks out there. However, I think, you know, it's a pretty unique bottle, yes. But you know, again, that age statement over at least six years as well. And some really interesting, uh, you know, pretty interesting mash bill there. And again, you're supporting like a craft distillery there as well. And then lastly, why I redid this video is over the last couple of days to the back end of March, Jack Daniels sent a social media into a meltdown. So if you remember a couple of years ago, they released the Jack Daniels Barrel Proof Single Barrel Rye, and that was a really big hit. And they haven't really done anything uh, with the full-time rye releases since then. Yes, they do like the single barrel rye. They also do the Jack Daniels traditional rye. But they haven't really put out the Barrel Proof Single Barrel Rye for a long time. So out of the blue, I might not have been out of blue, out of the blue, but it was out of the blue to me. They dropped uh, this bottle on the screen here. That is the Jack Daniel Single Barrel Barrel Proof Rye. This was clocking in at 68.7% alcohol by volume. So really getting up there in ABV and similar to the older ones that they released a few years ago. So a lot of people were stating, is this just a single, uh, single barrel that they released at the distillery or is this gonna become nationwide? So all the information I was able to find is that this is gonna be a regular shelf sitting item, much like the barrel proof versions. So if you're able to find the barrel proof bourbons, oh, I shouldn't say bourbon. If you're able to find the single barrel, barrel proof whiskeys out there, then you might be able to find these when they come out. So originally this was supposed to come out in the beginning of 2024, so it caught me off guard a little bit, and it could still potentially come out nationwide on that uh, around that time. However, they did drop this guy. Maybe they just had one ready and they just wanted let it go to kind of get out maybe a little bit publicity and they did an excellent job with that as well obviously a lot of you folks out there probably not going to be able to get one of these unless you live in tennessee and you are aware of the drop um it's, it's a pretty cool ball and i would love to get one i'm just probably not going to be able to find one because they're not distributing it right now so i'm going to be patient and i'm going to wait there so just to finish some stuff off here we're going to talk a little bit about some honorable mentions here quickly so like i said earlier on um the yearly releases around the the Kentucky Derby time. We're gonna start seeing like the makers, I think it's like the Justify bottle that they do. Also the Wood, Wood, Woodford Reserve Kentucky Derby. I haven't been able to find that that much. I feel like the, uh, the uh, it's become maybe more of like an allocated bottle in some states. And then also at the Evan Williams Kentucky Derby. So there are three to really look out for this month. And then also Old Forester, or should I say lastly Old Forester. I'll put it out there 117 series warehouse H. So you should see that potentially loosen it up and come in run by you if you're able to find it. Yes, it's gonna be highly allocated, be a little bit on the pricey side, but if you're able to find the 117, I was able to try it when I was in Kentucky at a bar and it is phenomenal there too. So hopefully you enjoyed today's edition for the whiskey to look out for the, for the month of April. Thank you so much for enjoying the content that we're putting out and subscribing to the channel there as well. Don't forget to like this video and thank you to all our patrons as we drink through the world's whiskeys one glass at a time. Cheers.